Ever since I placed third at my junior high's Don't Wake Daddy tournament, I've been known as a master of focus. So today, I'm gonna to use that same focus and try to explain a little bit about how maybe you can start adding different chord tones in your solos, just learning the fretboard in general. This can also be a good lesson in how to follow a chord progression that goes out of key if you're playing solo over it, and the example we're gonna use is gonna sound like this. two chords and a few notes with each chord. I'm gonna be rocking out the D'Angelico, the Lux Atlantic through my Finder practice amp. And all it is is focusing on what is happening whenever you play a major chord. Now, A major, C major, two chords you might not see in combination with each other. That's why I purposely picked these because we can really attach this kind of focus that we're gonna talk about over any major chord we ever see, all right? so. A major. Now there's a scale that goes with that. It's called the A major scale. Now it's one thing to just learn a shape that goes with a chord, all right? And the major scale is always going to go with the major chord. But a lot of times you try to practice that. Maybe you're trying to solo something over like an A major chord. Maybe like. sounds like like that you're just really playing scales I think a better way once you kind of get that shape under your belt where you can your fingers can always find it is to really focus in on just a few notes and be able to play those notes in a musical context without having to think too much about it where your ear is gonna be able to guide your playing okay this is higher this is lower I know exactly what it's gonna sound like when I go a few notes away in a scale. So we're taking part of this A major scale and we're really gonna focus and hone in on it and be able to connect it to any chord that we see. All right, so again, I just rifled through that major scale, but we're just gonna take a couple notes from here. We're gonna start with the sixth fret on the G string, five and seven on the B string, and five and seven on the high E string. So we've got Okay, we've got those five notes that we're really just gonna focus on and be able to do a lot of different things with. There's, and there's really like an infinite amount of things you can do with only five notes, right? Some might say the pentatonic scale, but I wanna kinda just look at this as part of a bigger scale. And really, if we're talking about A, how we're gonna connect this major chord to this piece of the scale is by learning the names of the notes on the E strings, right? Low or high, it doesn't really matter. All I'm thinking of, whenever I want to get somewhere and I, I see an A major chord, I can always go to this spot right here, and I'm going to line my pointer finger up with the fifth fret because that's an A on the E string, right? So there's my root note, but this is only one of five notes that I'm going to really rock out, okay? So what I might want to do is I'm going to slide into the root note, okay? So I'm playing this A major right here, but in my mind's eye, I'm thinking, of the fifth fret on the high E string is like where I'm going, okay? How I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna slide from the G string into my root note. And then maybe take whatever I have going on in the B string, five, seven, five. So I've got to slide into the sixth fret on the G string to the root note. And really just like that. I can be go G, E, G, B, 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 and I'm just calling out the names of the string that I'm hitting. I'm not so much worried about the names of the notes, you're gonna develop an ear for that later. A major chord. And then a riff from in there. Now maybe the next time I do it, I'm gonna go backwards. I'm going backwards through those notes and then forward again. And really by focusing on just a small select piece of the scale, we kind of get a little a little more practice on our belts of something that's happening in music context because very rarely in music, regardless of what genre you're playing in, is a line or a lick or a vocal melody or whatever you're trying to play gonna sound like a, like a scale just going up and forward, right? Forward and backwards. So really this is gonna be a musical context setting that we can just play getting used to these five notes by themselves together. 
double stopping where you play two at the same time. Like right there, I'm just playing the B and E string. Seven, five, then six G, five B, and then there. That's kind of a lick already. play around with those five notes instead of maybe going like A major, major scale. You know, then you kind of, in my experience, when, when I was first starting to try to do stuff like this, I would always be like, all right, major scale, major chord, what can I play in there? I really didn't, right off the bat, spend as much time as I should have maybe just thinking about like, all right, I'm gonna focus on a piece of this, I really get this one piece good, and then maybe I can start adding more to it, right? After you do this, Maybe we could add something like that because the end of the scale, that fourth fret would also be in uh, the major scale. So after you get your hands ready to get that down, you could add that right there, that major seventh note. Really, just take pieces of it. Now, again, if we're soloing or playing lead or accompanying with something outside of regular key, like, okay, I'm going from A major, not in the same key, right? That that kind of throws out all the notes of if I just play, if I really know the A major scale well. Well, crap, like what do I do now, now that I'm changing keys? It's really, you know, not thinking of it as a key change, just thinking of it as playing along moving with the chord. So I can do the exact same thing over a C note. Now, it requires me to know where a C note is on the E string, that happens to be the eighth fret. So now this is my root note after I play a C, which means, this is kind of my group of five notes right here that I can use over any major chord. So ninth fret on the G string, A 10 B, A 10 E, C major chord. I'm really just mirroring absolutely everything that I did in the A major spot, but now I'm doing it with C. And then eventually you can start seeing this kind of thing. Or as an A and a C major. And really just kind of like any kind of chord, major, minor, all sorts of stuff. We can learn different, focus in on different pieces of it uh, throughout a scale. And I think that's kind of a more musical context that you can do anywhere. And it also is really helping you understand the fretboard as far as like where everything else is going. Like uh, you can pick anything, you can pick like a B major. Do the same thing, find a B, seventh fret, on the high E string. That's why it's really important just to kind of just drill yourself, you know, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Once you have that down, you always have kind of a touchstone that you can always go to for B. So whenever I see a B major chord, I don't even necessarily think like on a chord chart or a, or a song chart or something. I see a B major, depending on what my role is in the setting of playing that I'm doing. If I'm just playing acoustic guitar, I could always just play a B chord. But if maybe I'm accompanying somebody else, I don't wanna step on their feet. If like I'm, play, I'm playing an electric lead or something and there's an acoustic guitar playing a B major, I don't, play, I don't wanna play the same thing they're playing all the time. So I know I can always just jump up here. And that's always gonna sound good over its major counterpart either way. So just kind of like a few things to think about, especially what's better than that kind of slide into the root note of where you're doing. Really, all the licks in the world are born from this one area of focus. So hopefully that kind of cleared up some stuff on the fretboard. I know kind of thinking about this, breaking bigger scales and modes and hand positions into smaller chunks uh, without necessarily eliminating it and kind of being like, oh, this is just the pentatonic. I know obviously I probably should have picked a different number than five notes because <laughs> we always go back to the pentatonic scale anyways. But uh, the point is, this is an example to take something from the major scale or whichever scale you want to use and then just really kind of zone in on just a few pieces of it until you really feel comfortable with it. And then you're not daunted and overloaded with trying to fit all the notes and stuff into it at the same time. So let me know what you think. Any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.